became an official state park in uh, February of 1967. Uh, prior to that, uh, time uh, it was going to be a private park. Uh, Carol Sturker had died in a car accident in the early 1960s and her father wanted to uh, establish a park as a safe haven where children could come and play. So they began raising money to uh, buy land in this area because of the geological features and, and they developed a plan um, to, to create the park. Um, they realized that, you know, they had more acreage than they could take care of, so they asked the state if the state would be interested in acquiring it as a state park. The state said if you could, you know, raise an additional $175,000, we'll match it and then we'll be able to maintain it. So that's what happened, and then in uh, February of uh, 1967, it became a state Two thousand two hundred and seventy-three acres, and seven hundred and fifty of those have been designated a wild area, which is the Gans Creek Wild Area. Yeah, the Pink Planarian is endemic to the Devil's Icebox Cave System. The only place in the world that it's found is here in the park, so that's pretty unique. Bonfem Creek, uh, actually, uh, there's a swallow hole just north of the bridge where Bonfem Creek goes under uh, Highway 163. So Bonfem Creek, go, a lot of the water from that gets pirated into the swallow hole and it goes underground and that forms the basis of the stream through the Devil's Icebox cave system. It um, so, and then it comes out of the spring and it forms what we call uh, the Devil's Icebox Spring Branch. And then it meets up with Gans Creek and Clear Creek to form Little Bob Fen. Um, it's 120 foot long, about 65 foot tall, and it is a section of cave. Um, we'll talk later about what happened on the other side, but you know, if it was the cave entrance, it would still be dark over there. Mm -hmm. There is a collapse on the other side. This is spring-fed from the cave, and it's very consistent and flowing about 700,000 gallons a day. Um, more, of course, when there's rainfall. And so for early settlers, this was a source of power to, uh, you know, they used a water wheel uh, to generate power. And this would turn gears that ground, uh, would grind grain. So farmers brought their, you know, like their, say their corn here to be ground into cornmeal, wheat into flour. So there was a grist mill here. And then there was a whiskey distillery <laughs> operated from 1839 to 1907. A little town of, um, I guess, Rockbridge Mills was, was established around that area. There used to be, uh, like, where the rock was quarried, there's an area that we call the stage where people used to go up and give um, public speeches and campaigns. Um, there was, they built a dam on the, uh, on the south end of the rock bridge to help control the water so they could always have a supply of water to run the mill. Um, so it's a, it's a small little town. At one point, 17% um, of all the whiskey in Missouri was manufactured here. So. You can see part of the, the base of the chimney and some of the, the stone foundations of the, of the whiskey distillery. Well, depending on the year, between 4,000 and 5,000 students 